My name is Sean Cavanaugh. I'm a technical marketing manager here at Red Hat. Today, we'll be covering infrastructure awareness for network automation, where we use automation and Ansible to gather facts about your network and do cool things with it. So let's go ahead and get started. So infrastructure awareness, why is it important? This is another read-only use case where you're not changing production configs, you're just automating getting information out of your network devices, your Cisco routers, your Arista switches, your Juniper edge devices, whatever it happens to be. We're normalizing configuration into standard structured data. And this can be transformed into whatever structured data you want. So if, if you want JSON, you want YAML, you want a specific data structure, that's easy to do. This is also referred to as dynamic documentation. So you may see that term used from different engineers. And this means that a lot of times your running configuration is your source of truth. So now you can automate that. So you know when you're starting to troubleshoot something that you have the most up-to-date information, the correct IP addresses, and you know what's actually working and not working. Why do we think Ansible Automation Platform is great for this use case? We have standard data models. That means that it's as easy to automate Cisco as it is Arista, as it is Juniper. And even with Cisco, we have multiple different platforms we support. We're constantly expanding fact capabilities. So every time we have a new module come out, that means more facts, more structured data, less work. You don't need to write some sort of regex uh, complicated filter to figure out how it works. And we have a huge ecosystem of tools. So in this example I'll show in the actual demo, I'm actually going to show building a little website with Ansible and then putting this all, all this information into a website and then display that information really easily and dynamically to the users. If we have a network native configuration, we basically transform this as Ansible facts. So Ansible facts are key value pairs. So you see a key would be Ansible net iOS type. And then the fact or, or the value is iOS XE. So you can imagine really quickly as we get hundreds of these key value pairs that allows really easy information gathering. So imagine uh, MTUs, that's one that comes up a lot is if I'm mapping MTUs, Usually, when I got a trouble ticket when I was a support engineer, I would get these kind of fairly, uh, fairly vague problems where someone would say, uh, the network's slow sometimes from server 10 and rack 3. And a lot of times, this always came down to something, some human error where MTU is misconfigured on one east-west port and one switch port. Or an OSPF point-to-point -point link was misconfigured, or a BGP adjacency wasn't quite set up right, where some of the routes were going and some weren't. Um, it was very common where it was like the same three to five things every time, and it was always human error. And this is something Ansible is great for finding, giving you that infrastructure awareness by just grabbing Ansible facts. Again, the data output is flexible. Once we turn the data into structured data, it's really easy to transform into whatever we want, whether it's Markdown, an HTML website like I'm going to show, pumping the information back into an IPAM tool like Netbox or Infoblox, or the database of your choice. As Ansible is really configurable and we can kind of customize that data and send it on. Automation controller really easily allows us to see what that data looks like. So whether you're automating on the command line or in automation controller, you can just click JSON here and see that information and then you can figure out how you're gonna map it out. In addition, I'm not gonna cover it in this demo, but check out Ansible Utils. It's a utility library of different filters where you can transform data. Sometimes certain network switches have these giant JSON blobs that are confusing to kind of go through. And we can basically use different filters in our Ansible Utilities, which is built into our product, but it's also upstream and open source so that you can transform data sets if the JSON is too complicated. But for the most part, our resource modules are very simple. You can see here it's a flat dictionary. It's really easy to loop through. So this is my automation controller. Um, I'm going to go to my job templates. So here I've preloaded a bunch of job templates. I actually used our community of practice collection to preload all these job templates into this controller. So this controller was ephemerally built with Ansible, by Ansible, so I kind of say we drink our own champagne. So I just booted this up specifically for this video. So I have a pre-made uh, job template. A job template, if you're not familiar with them, is basically a playbook in this case. It disaggregates the playbook into three parts. A project where we store the playbook, their credentials, which is how we access the, the equipment. So the workshop credentials credential here is an SSH key and then inventories and inventories can be a flat file. It can be a GitHub repo. It can be again, IPAM. It could be public cloud. There's tons of different inventory plugins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this network report. We can look at it really quickly. It's loading the pl playbooks network report from my workshop project. It's actually stored at 
github.com slash network automation slash toolkit, if I could spell. And you'll see that all the roles are here. So you can grab this into your automation controller and use that same uh, build report. You see network report here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and launch this. It's then going to run the playbook inside the execution environment. We can actually zoom in on this task while it's running and we can see all the output from all the different facts it gathered. You can actually download this output to use a text editor of your choice if you wanna look at things. It's installing Apache and we're done. So it had a little CSS, a little HTML, nothing too complicated. And I'll give the source code in the description for this video. But what I want to show is more the use case here. Um, I create a little website. I use the debug statement to print it out and then I'm going to open this. And this is really cool is all I've done is I've taken facts, those key value pairs and structured data. I've used a tiny bit of Jinja. Um, and I just print these out into a nice HTML table and a little bit of CSS, and I can actually kind of zoom in to all these different devices. So router one is a Cisco iOS device. Um, router two is an Arista EOS, and router three is a Juniper Junos box. And then I have another Arista box down as router four. So I just have four routers or switches running in Amazon EC2, just to make it easy for me to spin up a lab. Um, I think I do have some BGP configured, so I can look at BGP and what's configured there. And then this is just really, really simple um, HTML. And this is dynamic, meaning it's live. It was created as soon as I pressed the job template launch, uh, launch button. So this, imagine if I had 50 interfaces instead of just four here, since it's a virtual router, and I could have them MTU, I could actually like highlight this field if it wasn't the exact MTU I wanted. Or if I was looking at OSPF information, I could look at point to point links like I was talking about earlier. So this is what we mean by this infrastructure awareness is we can kind of use that data very quickly to like glean information about our network and look at it like a network engineer would. Now this is what I made just with some of the solution architects at, at Red Hat. Um, this code is, is built in. This is the network toolkit, which I'll have a link again in the description. But you can imagine how powerful this is. Imagine I just wanted to take all this IP, ad IP address information and pump it into my IP address management tool and make sure that it's up to date, or I wanted to launch this into service now. Infrastructure awareness and dynamic documentation are a super powerful um, use case. Really quickly, I just want to show like another little website. This is just a simpler one to show kind of highlighting a cell. Is humans will never notice this difference of code versions like 703 versus 702. These are real Cisco NXOS code versions. And imagine there was a CVE vulnerability for one version and you had 500 of these switches in your network. This is where automation can allow something to pop. Now, maybe visualization, maybe it's just an alert to Slack, but this is where infrastructure awareness, regardless of how you're using it, can help operators become proactive versus reactive. Thank you for watching this demo. Hopefully I kept it short enough to keep it interesting. I kind of have a three calls of action of where you can go and learn more if you are so inclined to do so for network automation. I have all my workshop examples. The four routers you saw today is all on aap2.demoredhat.com. We use the networking toolkit that we've put together and showed all of the use cases. We have two free eBooks. Part one is kind of a generalist high level. This might be more interesting to someone who's just trying to understand network automation. There's no YAML, there's no playbooks in there. You don't need to be a person who wants to write automation, just trying to understand how it fits. Maybe you're a manager. Part two is actually like hello world, getting started, beginner who wants to learn. So these are again, two free eBooks. I think they're less than 30 pages each. I'd have to look at it again, but they're, they're fairly short. And then for the hardcore user, we have DO457, which is a week long bootcamp networking class. And if you're a Red Hat customer, you might be surprised that we will often bundle training with a lot of our products. Um, so you may have credits that you can use for that training. So talk to your Red Hat account team today, and I think you will have a great time no matter what direction you're taking. Thank you.